Bear in mind that all during this time, the automobile industry is coming into prominence. Okay? Uh, Buick has set up factories uh, starting at Hamilton Avenue uh, going north. And at the same time, uh, the first wave of the Great Migration was taking place. And the first wave, of course, not only included African Americans from the South, you know, trying to uh, come to the promised land, but it also included, uh, you know, European immigrants, primarily from Eastern Europe. So between 19, uh, 1874, when we first see St. John Street recorded uh, in the city of the Rectory, up, in, uh, up until 1925, the St. John Street area was truly an international community. Uh, that was the time of tremendous growth. Uh, and of course, along with growth comes many problems. I have a, a very dismal photo of where some of the people who came to work in the factory initially lived, I'm not even going to put it up there, because I can barely see it. Uh, but the people, uh, there, there just wasn't enough housing, you know, to, to meet the demand. So people would set up tent cities, uh, they would build shanties around the building plant, and, and it really became a great embarrassment uh, to the executives of General Motors. You know, here they are trying to to act like they were the greatest corporations in the world, and they got people camped out on their, around their buildings, you know, looking like they're near starvation and, and destitute. So, you know, what General Motors did was, uh, at that time, they had their own housing development company. So, they built houses to accommodate the influx of immigrants coming to work. Uh, they constructed Civic Park, uh, Chevrolet Park. Uh, let me see if I can come up with the other. Um, uh, Chris, my park. <laughs> my park was another. However, African Americans uh, were prohibited from living. There were racial covenants uh, that restricted who could live in those areas. So at the time, African Americans could only live on the south end of, of town in an area called Floral Park. I used to live on Floral Park uh, for a minute. Remember that time? Uh, and Donald, talked, Donald used, to, used to beat me in dominoes uh, back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I wish I still knew how to say it. But uh, we were relegated to just Lowell Park and the St. John's area. Now, the original Negro people lived in Florida Park. Okay? And, and this is really the beginning of that divisiveness between the north side and the south side. You know, because they thought they were the first people, they were the better people, and people who came later had to live in the St. John's Street area, and therefore they were the lesser people. You know, and that's what they had to prevail, you know, for, for decades. And I, I think in some Respects still does. So, so that's what uh, that's the reason why uh, Saint John uh, and and Paul Park, you know, you know, were as racially segregated as, as they became. Uh, black folks had no other place to live. But once, you know, uh, St. John and Cole Park began bursting at the seams, so to speak, you know, we moved into other areas, you know, across 
uh, and Sam Rowland, Rollin, R-O-L-L, A-N-D, uh, was the first African American to work in the uh, uh, in Buick Motors. The uh, second wave uh, of the <coughs> migration took place from 1940 on, and of course, you know, uh, World War II had erupted, and there was a, a another need for machinery, automobiles, tanks, uh, armaments, and everything else related to war. So that created a, another demand uh, for uh, a huge number of laborers. Uh, so by 1947, Fairview School, which had been uh, you know, such a multicultural institution, was 